I'm Pius Spinder, and I'm a product manager with a strong focus on growth. For the last two and a half years, I have been working at Canva. And before that, I worked four and a half years at Facebook, started my own print-on-demand business, craftoak.com, which received awards for out, an outstanding product experience. And today, I'm very excited to, to be here and speak with you about my learnings on how to become a great growth product manager. Here's a quick overview of the day. I will introduce the topic briefly. What is a growth product manager? How to become a successful growth product manager? And concluding with a quick summary. First, the introduction. My personal story is really about creativity and data. I think I'm one of the growth product managers with the most experience in experiments, AKA A-B testing. There are many areas of product managers I don't understand that well, but overall I led around 500 experiments across Facebook and Canva and my own business. I think the reason is partly because of my upbringing. My mother is a custom designer and artist and I grew up quite creative, but I always had a big passion for data. Looking back, I think the combination of creativity and data is very helpful much later in my life. So for example, all the experiments I create every day um, and the successful ones are involving data and creative decision making. And you need to be a creative problem solver for that. For example, I was able to outline uh, customer journey, funnels myself with data and match visually the user experience to that. And through that help to solve business and customer problems with engineers, designers or other people in the company. My professional story is that I started in Ireland to help Facebook page owners to have a great experience, channel back feedback to the headquarters in California. There I launched as well my first, very first experiment. Then I moved to California, the US to help the long tail of business pages to be successful. I grew Facebook pages, events, offers, marketplace and launched even Facebook jobs and ran even more experiments. In parallel, I started my own business, craftoak.com, received some awards from Product Hunt and also helped to scale the business from zero to $1 million revenue in less than two years and served over 30,000 customers to date. In 2019, I had a quick stop over in Austria, where I'm originally from, as you can hear from my accent probably. And there I helped to launch experiments in the big bank to, and help to make more data-driven decisions as well in this business. Since 2019, I started working at Canva. In the beginning, I helped grow Canva presentations to one of the fastest growing products within Canva. As part of that, I helped the group to not only run lots of experiments, but also teach many people and members of the group to do it themselves. Since 2020, I have been working as a product manager in two important areas at Canva, the authenticating experience and the main landing page, canva.com. Initially, I started working with a small team focusing on authentication and eventually this team grew. And now I'm managing two. And in short, I dedicated the last eight years of my professional life to in product, focusing on experimentation and growing the business through that. What I didn't tell you is that I always wanted to become a product manager, focusing on growth and experimentation. And it wasn't that easy. First, the first learning is when, when to listen and when not to listen to advice to become a product manager. Many people will help you and don't be discouraged if someone tells you it is difficult to become a product manager. In fact, I think it's important to understand if I could become a product manager, it will be very easy for you as well. Second, it took me time to become a product manager. I thought multiple times of quitting my job I was in uh, to get the role straight away. But I realized that at Facebook, I was doing already a lot of the work a product manager does. And there are different ways on doing product work. That's why I launched my own business to learn more holistically how to manage a product and business. It helped me significantly in applications afterwards, having made these learnings. And eventually, as you can see, I became a successful product manager. You can create your own path on helping you become a product manager. You don't have to be a product manager already. Third and last, focus on an angle that aligns with your passion. Do you want to run a lemonade shop if you hate lemonade? Probably not. Therefore, I choose focusing on growth and helping business for data-driven decision-making. This is what I'm really passionate about. There are many different avenues within product managers you can go down. 
I'm passionate about the focus on growth because you can create so much value for customers and companies like Canva, Facebook, or others. If you increase active users or revenue just by a tiny percentage, the impact can be amazingly big. I think this is a great responsibility I ensure in my work. For all the reasons before, I think it's initiatives and platforms like productschool.com are very important to democratize the way of becoming a great product manager and reduce barriers to become a product manager. For example, for me, it was very difficult to become a product manager because at the time there were no initiatives like product school in place. And I really love seeing these type of initiatives and platform emerge. I think that's really great and will help the product craft to get more foundations and make it easier for others to enter as well, like yourself. What is a growth product manager? In, in short, the role of a product manager really involves loving data, basic design skill, and focusing on growth, which is either the revenue or focusing on active users. There are some of the characteristic of a growth product manager. Also acknowledge that any product manager will have to do the same. And this is based really on my own experience only. So what I'm doing more of in my day to day as a growth product manager. And this again is really based on my own experience. First, I work a lot on funnels, trying to understand how I can help close the gap of users turning from one step to another. For example, people landing on a, on a specific part on a product and then engaging more or being acquired. Particularly, I work often at one stage of the funnel, for example, acquisition to retention or awareness to, awareness to acquisition, with the end goal of influencing active users and revenue um, to go up and also create a positive user experience in parallel. All decision on whether something work or doesn't work are informed through A-B tests and experiments. We really want to learn whether something worked or didn't work before allowing more people experience it. I think this is a principle for many tech companies in the industry. Of course, data is not everything, but why would you release a change if it doesn't help measurable help users or the business? Next, I need to make sure that everyone is aligned and get a lot of learnings in the product space. So it is really important that the quality and the speed in which experiments are released is high. So I need to make sure that we're making doing this while keeping the user experience as great as possible for every feature and change we release in the product. Last, I need to make sure to help engineering data research and design stay connected to keep focusing on growth of active users or revenue. Correct the course if necessary. Also manage a team or right now even two teams and make sure that everyone has a good time while working on the future of the product. Next, I will share how to become a growth product manager and be great at it. I thought that maybe some of you are already working as a growth product manager. So I came up with seven questions, which I thought can be helpful for you to evaluate how well you are doing. Each question can be scored and answered from a scale from one to five, one being the lowest score and five the highest score. In the end, you can compute your own score and see whether you're st where you're standing. If your score is higher, you are on the way to become a great product growth product manager. If your score is lower, there's some opportunities for you to learn the craft or even find like ment mentors or sponsors. This helped me to set me up for success in the past and I hope it will be of help for you as well. So the first question is, do you already work or study in a field which relates to growth and product related problems? Uh, you could be an engineer, work in a customer, work as customer success or be a student. For example, I worked in product operations, which is similar to customer success. At Facebook. When I started to think about becoming a product manager, uh, I had to help the page owners at even bigger scale. So you don't have to be a product manager to become a product manager. You might be already working in this field. It helps not only for a growth product manager, but also for any product manager to be excited to look at data, or at least imagine to build up this muscle further. One example here is Google Analytics, which I use to look at the performance of my own business. Translate this then into problems I need to solve for my own business and its users, and then make the actual changes in the interface. Especially in the beginning of my career, I used SQL a lot to help make data-driven decisions. 
I learned this while working at for Facebook and was lucky enough to be empowered by my former manager. She invested heavily in me to allow me to get these data skills. And if you are in the position to learn more data skills, this is like really, really valuable, especially in the beginning as a product manager or a growth product manager. Third, depending on the size of product you're working on, retention funnels can be very important to understand. Even if you only solve a small piece of the overall success in the product and company, improving retention and closing gaps in the funnel can determine the success and failure of a company. One of the leaders that really inspired me while working at Facebook was Alex Schultz for Meta now, who speaks about the importance of retention and retention curves. The next one thing is that was always valuable at any company where suggesting changes in the product with actual mockups um, and designs. I started with sketches, with pen and paper, and then used different design tools later. Personally, I know I love to use Canva, of course, because I work there, and it's also like a great tool to use. And I put like screenshots of potential changes, which I can share then with my team or um, engineers or designers, get feedback, and then actually bring the changes live. This is just an example of my own business on how I use Canva and mockups. Many changes that you, you will introduce in the product won't lead to successful results. It means that you really need to be okay to fail. Will you actually impact the customer experience positive? As you can see with the number of experiments I ran over time, uh, or roughly only one in 10 is successful. I have learnings from over six years, which are outlined here and across 500 experiments with Meta, Canva and my own business. And that ratio of one to 10 is pretty much consistent. As you get more experience, you get better in making decisions as experiments and learnings from one area of the product will carry over across the product and other areas. And you can test bigger changes, but overall the takeaway is you must be really okay to fail because most changes won't lead to successful experiments. I'm personally, I'm not that good in that because of course I want all my experiments to succeed. So that's something I need to improve myself. Will you be able to scale yourself and teach others how to focus on growth? This will likely not happen in the very beginning of your career, but there is a limit to how many changes you can do by yourself. Therefore, it is very critical that at some point, teach every member of the team how to focus on growth themselves, set up experiments herself or himself. Often, it is the responsibility of the product growth manager to do that and ensure the team has the resources and culture in place to focus on growth. Imagine if not only you by yourself, but also every engineer, designer, and other stakeholder can come up with exciting changes to make in the product and create ideas which will impact and grow significantly in the company. How exciting and also how great for the business and customers, because now not only you, but everyone else can make the changes. Are you okay to advocate for potential controversial changes? Um, this is based on my personal experience only. And not all the changes that you will release that will ha have big impact will be in agreement across the company with every stakeholder. Even if the data is showing strong signals and positive results, it is hard to move forward with something that is considered a non-desired user experience, in particular for notifications and pop-ups. Often these changes drive big impact on the customer experience and the business. As a growth product manager, I feel my responsibility is to do the right thing for both the customer and um, the business, improve through looking at the data and looking at, at the customer feedback that some of these changes might be beneficial, even though the user experience is not desired. Why is that? We often uh, look at uh, the customer experience when you manage the product day to day. So the feedback that we get in the companies and the product is often biased towards heavy users. So we need to make really sure that when we're releasing changes and we're looking at the data, we're looking at it holistically, not only through the lens of the employees and people uh, using it heavily. Um, yeah, um, this is not only something that a growth product manager needs to do, but probably any product manager and you need to be prepared to negotiate those changes and potentially even say, oh, maybe I'm wrong about this change. Let's not move forward, even though the results are great. So it can go either way. So here is my personal rating. So I score only 75% um, of being a great growth product managers. I think the point here is really that um, uh, even for um, experienced growth product managers like myself, um, 
I always need to learn and improve myself. So if um, you score like below 50%, that's great. And um, this is just like an, a small reminder for you to keep be motivated and keep investing in learning and studying to help you set up to set you up for success and be a successful growth product manager yourself. So how to learn the actual craft? I I think it is very simple. Like it's either through study or practice, right? Um, if you go to productschool.com, you will study it and then you also need to practice it. So you can study and practice. If you study the product management craft, you can use productschool.com or platform or other platforms to learn and get better. It is also important to practice your skills, for example, through getting an internship, changing the focus of your role to more that aligns with product management activities in your current job. That's for example, what I did in the past. Apply for product management roles and start roles which you think can help you to bridge a role to eventually become a product manager. That's also what I did. I did a combination of all the above. I always read up information about product management. I had time to practice through various roles and I always exposed myself to work with engineers, designers and product managers so I could learn from them on their way of working. Each team and company has a slightly different approach to how they manage the backlog, the product man management craft. And that's important to remember. Last, I want to share the importance of finding a great mentor. I personally was very lucky with people who always believed in me and supported me on my journey. And whether they were managers, product managers, product marketing managers, or engineers, there were always people willing to help me in my career so I can become a growth product manager. So how do you find a great mentor? If you're working you can find mentors in the company you are at at the moment this works very well for me in my turn become a product manager and growth product manager you can always look outside your company as well for example through networking events particularly if your company is not that big like the company i was at, at facebook and meta it helps to go like to networking event and events and get to know other people and last you can speak to professors or lecturers if you're a student for advice also, mentorship comes in different form and shapes, and it's not a consistent experience. I had several mentors over a long period of time, and each of them teaching me different things. And last, and that's, I think, very critical, once you are a successful product manager, become a mentor yourself and help others. So as I'm here today um, uh, sharing my learnings, do the same uh, when you are experienced to help others to grow. Otherwise, there won't be enough people to help us succeed, become product managers in the future. To sum up, people can come from any profession to become product managers. There are many ways to become a growth product manager or product manager like myself, and it is not difficult to achieve that. Remember it. As a growth product manager, there's a strong focus on growth experimentation and data. You will likely own part of the entire funnel. I thought about seven questions that can help you determine where you're standing as a growth product manager. Answer these questions to help you see your gaps and how to become a great growth product manager. To both study and apply your learnings in, in practice if you can. This will be a catalyst to help you set you up for success. And finally, really find also a mentor who can help you move into product management or growth product management. And last, Big thank you for the product management school for allowing me to be here today and all of you for listening. Uh, please ask any questions. I'm happy to answer and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.